up, fam? Welcome back to the CEO Pulse Podcast on the Mindset Monday series with my co-host, Justin Thorsad. Uh, we have a pretty cool uh, topic today, and uh, this is all credit to my buddy, uh, Justin, here, but it's, it's, uh, we're, we want to talk about doing the hard thing, okay? What inhibits us? What stops us from doing the hard things? And, and actually um, puts us in a place of procrastination and then just kind of pushing the ball down the road and not really handling the stuff that we're supposed to be handling to get the results that we want to get, right? Absolutely. Um, it happens to entrepreneurs all the time. It happens as employees all the time. And bottom line, as human beings, I think there's a, a big mental block in terms of um, what gives us the courage to act um, and and uh, really take action when we have to, right? So, super glad to have you on the show, brother, again. Yeah, man. Excited to be here. Yeah. I'm loving Mondays, man. I'm Absolutely. loving Mondays. I'm getting raving reviews. Like, my mom said it was amazing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. My, my sister also watched it once. Um, she was in the bathroom. And she's like, oh my god, like the best bathroom break she's ever had. Wonderful. Um, yeah. So that's a long I mean, I'm, we're making we're making waves. Yeah. <laughs> we're making waves. The ripple yeah, effect. The brother. ripple effect. <laughs> the impact is is just astounding. Um, so, <laughs> with that being said, no, but for reals, I'm getting really good comments and and, and uh, feedback from people just reaching out and saying, you know, giving us thanks and and uh, saying that you know some of the stuff that we're putting out there just brings that sense of awareness, right? Planting yeah. that seed. If at the end of the day, as individuals, we can plant the seed. I believe we're doing, you know, we're walking in the right direction. So Yeah, absolutely. Well, isn't that where all <laughs> transformation happens is by a seed being planted first and letting 100%. that germinate and, and blossom into something beautiful? A hundred percent. A hundred percent. So let's talk about doing the hard thing. All right. What does that mean? Yeah, well, I think first of all, doing the hard things is taking a look at what are my strengths and what do I perceive my weaknesses to be? And all of that comes down to experiences as that we have all have had um, as young children and you know what are the stories and the beliefs that we've made up about ourselves that that bundle of BS belief systems mm. and the self-image like who do I think I am what do I think I'm capable of what do I think I'm worthy of what do I think I deserve how much money is too much um, <coughs> all of that right because fundamentally the belief systems are what are unconsciously driving behavior they're habits Yes. Right. So when we say something's hard, that's only because we're assigning meaning or significance to that thing that it's hard. It nothing has any inherent meaning or significance. 100%. It's all assigned. 100%, right. Yeah. So we're the ones, first of all, <coughs> saying it's hard. And so taking a look at if I'm honest with myself, like on the inside here, mentally, what makes me think this is hard? What story am I making up about this task, this action item in such a way that I think something bad's going to happen or I'm going to be a failure or I'm not competent or not capable or I'm insufficient because we're the ones saying that. So what's right. really hard? Now, that being said, I still have things that I assign that are hard. You know yeah. what I mean? Even today, there was a conversation to have. And I was like, oh, no. And I started noticing those thoughts and these emotions that come up, that energy. And like, well, wait a minute. Caught it. I'm doing it again. And so let me get all of that BS story off the plate and just be present with the situation. So it was having a conversation with someone, getting some honest feedback, because feedback comes from love. Yes. Right. But how many times do people stop themselves from having honest conversations and giving feedback because they're concerned about what someone else is going to say, how they're going to feel, are they going to take their love and connection away, are they not going to like me anymore? And so it's hard to have this conversation. When in reality, something <laughs> as hard as an honest conversation about expressing yourself, your emotions, what didn't sit well with you, and coming from love and compassion of like, I care enough about you for you to be able to see this, right? Because typically when you give feedback to somebody, it's because you notice a, a, uh, a pattern in their behavior that's not serving them well in their life and creating their desired results. Right. You know what I mean? It, it's as simple as, if you're my friend, you got a book hanging, I'm going to tell you. You know what I mean? It's like, would you be mad? No. You'd be like, oh, thanks, man, because no one would tell me that because everyone's embarrassed. I'd probably tell you after the restaurant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 yeah totally. <laughs> yeah, you, you'd let me walk around with yeah, it just because yeah, it's absolutely. funny. 100%. You know what I mean? 100%. <laughs> but to have those conversations as an example of doing something that's hard, <clears throat> like it gives you the gift to show yourself that you can perfectly express yourself, your emotions, give people honest feedback to help them get unstuck in life. And notice that it can actually bring the relationship closer together. It actually builds intimacy. It builds connection to be able to have those kind of honest conversations. Because, I mean, let's face it. You know, you and I are really good friends, and there's a lot of trust. There's a lot of admiration. There's a lot of respect. Why? Because we give each other feedback. 
absolutely. Sometimes not the nicest. No, and stuff, it's not always but, easy because it's like, it I don't want you to be pissed at me, yeah. right? But I care enough about <clears throat> you. I love you enough to tell you. I think that's important to understand, too. Okay, when, when uh, we're having a difficult conversation, and, and this is, I mean, the topic is, is doing, doing hard things, right? Conversations go hand in hand with that. Sometimes we want to, uh, you know, hold back or push back or just procrastinate on a, on a talk that we got to have with employees, with a significant oh, others, yeah. with a friend. Uh, and we tell people what they want to hear. Yes. Uh, but it's not... It's not honoring them. It's not doing no. them any justice, right? Or the friendship or the relationship, any justice, uh, uh, any justice a lot of the times. Um, well, not only that, but it <clears throat> damages your own self-esteem when you exactly. know something needs to be said, and then you it's hard. And so you back off and you say, you know, you manipulate yourself and the, and the, the message yeah. because it, it's just you're taking from yourself and you're chipping away at your own self-esteem, your own self-respect that you're cowering away from something that you deem is hard because of the story you're making up about what's going to happen if you do say that thing. Right. Um, and it, it's important to understand what space it's coming from. Right. Um, again, I love the term awareness or the idea of awareness. The power, actually, of awareness. Uh, I love that. When you are when you have awareness, um, you, there, you have a limited uh, amount of stuff that you can get pissed off at. It just puts you in a way better place. Now, being aware of where your conversation is coming from uh, is important, right? For example, sure. me having a conversation with somebody, you know, a relationship and, and telling him, hey, listen, this, is, this, is, this might be unsolic unsolicited advice, <laughs> you know, sometimes, but I care about you. Um, uh, this, I'm seeing this. You know what I mean? Uh, it, putting, you know, coming from a space of love is always going to make it uh, better. And understanding what space that conversation is coming from, I think, uh, both ways. When somebody's right. having that conversation with us and being more open uh, to constructive, for example, constructive criticism, feedback, that type of stuff. Um, and understanding, you know, where they're coming from. Is it coming from a space of love? Is it coming from a space of envy? Is it coming from a space of, you know, what? You yeah, know, judgment or judgment? just opinion. Exactly. Yeah. So, so, but you can also ask that person, <clears throat> like in the situation that, that you teed up is, hey, are you open to some feedback? Yeah. You know what I mean? Because some people may not be in the space emotionally, mentally, in that moment of time to get some coaching, so to speak, right? It's like with your wife. You know what I mean? If she's vomiting about some things, what we want to do as men is like go fix the problem right? and like give her solutions, right? Yeah. But she maybe just wants to dump. And so that's a really important one with, with, with relationships is asking, are you just wanting to dump right now or are you open to some feedback? Are you feedback? venting? Yeah, are you yeah. venting or, or <clears throat> are you looking for solutions? No, I'm just yeah. venting. Okay, cool. Perfect. Yeah. Awesome. I'll be a punching bag. <laughs> um, no, I, uh, even for example, in our mastermind meetings, you know, when we meet every couple of weeks, right? Um, when we see it coming, oh, yeah. when somebody is, is bringing bullshit to the table and whatnot, it's like, okay, what's going on? We'll yeah. dig deeper before we jump into punching people in the throat. It, it's, <laughs> can I say something? I mean, we've been, we've been at this for for years. I mean, you're talking yeah. what, six, seven years? Something like uh, that. Something yeah. like that. We've been at it for years, right? So the trust is there. Um, we know that we can speak freely and whatnot, yet that permission uh, to to step over, you know, somebody else's boundaries, yeah. you know, it's still there, right? But it's a matter of respect. Now we usually and, just bulldoze over those boundaries, <laughs> but <you know>. yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But it, you know, it it, uh, it happens. Um, now doing the hard things and having the hard conversations, it's also a matter of respect. It, it, it totally is. Right. It's respecting yourself and <clears throat> respecting that person. And it, it, and it comes from love. It really does. And so just noticing the stories that go on in the mind about why I shouldn't say this or what might happen that's going to be negative in nature that you might be full of shit about. And How what beautiful things can come out of that. Like you said, like we were just messing around with, about, um, you know, bulldozing over the boundaries with each other. Mm -hmm. But that's because in the beginning, having respect, love, admiration, and demonstrating that through experience. <clears throat> that now we now know that we can go over those boundaries because we both already understand the come from. Right. So there's nothing to get upset about. You know? Yeah. So the, the awareness of the space is there. Um, so how, can, how can you break into a difficult conversation? You know what? That's a fantastic question because some people are like, I don't know how to approach it. Then just own that. Yeah. What's wrong with saying, hey, there's something that I want to talk with you about and I'm really uncomfortable and I'm really nervous about how you might react. Like, wh why not just own that? Yeah. I mean, how many people talk to you that way? Yeah. yeah with truth. With truth. Yeah. yeah. You know, like, why not just own the space that you're in, express your concerns. Like, I have some feedback for you. Yeah. However... I'm really apprehensive and I'm nervous about how you might take it. 
And then they're really going to want to know what it is. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> and they start asking. Yeah. The conversation opens up. You know, it's, it's interesting that you say that. Um, I have one one case in particular. I know one student, I mean, will do whatever it takes to not have a difficult conversation. Mm. Um, and he, he's got talent. I mean, he's got everything it takes to to get it done. And he, I mean, he's done, he's actually done phenomenally. And, and um and but every time it comes, you know, to a down to a real conversation between him and I, okay, this is what you got to do, holding accountability, that sort of stuff. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's there's a there's a gap, communication drops and whatnot. Yeah. And I know the uh, reason behind that is because of that, you know, sense of having that difficult conversation. Um, <clears throat> I have to pursue that particular student to reach him if there's something that like that, that I just want to say, right? Mm-hmm. Because I know he's not uh, evading because he can't do it. He's evading because he's pushing away on those stuff. So we're working on those, you know, kind yeah. of deals. But, but the point I'm trying to make is that we will have the uh, the audacity to go to, like beyond uh, extraordinary measures to not have those difficult conversations when yeah. in reality we come across them and then just you know go through that bridge. Uh, things become a lot easier. Totally. Well, and that's <clears throat> the premise of why we, you and I decided to have uh, this as a topic for a podcast to do the hard things. Because here's the deal: <clears throat> when, for example, like we're using the content of having a difficult conversation, right? And so, avoiding having that difficult conversation, people say they procrastinate and they put it off. And and procrastination is an interesting word because I believe it's really just <clears throat> code for avoidance and deflection. I'm uncomfortable, there's a story, there's yep. some emotions behind it that are negative in nature, and I'm avoiding having the conversation, I'm deflecting against it. And the key thing to look at is, if you take a look, how you do that and avoid and deflect, something that's uncomfortable, doing something hard, you can translate that in, where in your marriage do you do that? Yeah. Or where in your health? Where, where in your it finances? Happening? It's happening everywhere, because <clears throat> how you do one thing is how you do all things. What you do here is what you do there is what you do everywhere, yep. right? And so the beauty of doing the hard things is when you, as you said, get across that bridge, you get into action, you do it anyways. Like, who do you come out as a version of you on the yeah. other end of that? Like, that's the goal. That's the win, is taking that action. And, and I can tell you, man, from personal experience, every time I've had... I've taken a load like that off my back. It just feels so much better. Oh yeah, and compared I, to carrying yeah, around for compared days. Compared to carrying this 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 you know this big weight on your back about having you know a a conversation or doing anything that you're supposed to be doing, you're not doing, and, and just kind of pushing you know things out. Um, which um, shifting gears here into so that's conversations, right? Mm-hmm. That's having those difficult conversations. But I, I think it's I mean it, it's it's the number one step to anything. It is. Well, because we, as an entrepreneur, yeah. you're required to have a that's lot all, of conversations that's all with a lot doing. of people yeah. about a lot of things. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. I you know ABCs will always be selling, right? We're always selling ourselves. Totally. Um, first. That's where I took that um, that concept. It, it's and and that happens through conversations. If you're mm-hmm. not able to have a conversation or reach out to somebody because maybe it feels intimidating, maybe oh you know what, I don't want to reach out to that person because they're highly successful they're you know way out outside of my league or whatever um you're putting yourself in that context you're putting yourself in that space where nobody else is putting you it's it's like it's it's a self-action right so <laughs> totally. we're, we're you know i mean we're kicking ourselves in the ass before we even get the sh- uh, the shot at doing anything you know good yep. Yep. so break through that and then um start just people like having conversations it's amazing, right? You talk to highly successful people, and, and uh, they enjoy having conversations. I mean, I have people on the podcast all the time, and they love having conversations. Um, substance, right? Sure. Stuff is substance. So, mm-hmm. so uh, that's important to uh, to just keep in mind. Don't be afraid of doing that stuff. Uh, once you do, doors do open up. Um, now, what about doing the, the hard things? What about the actions and the procrastination that we get? Um, oftentimes, because you know we are afraid of something, we don't want change to come in. Uh, we feel like maybe our, our sense of worth is not you know quite there yet. There's a lot of lack of confidence. Mm, um, yeah, worth and confidence. Yeah. So, <clears throat> my biggest thing is I read a book called um, "Win" by Lou Holtz, the most winningest football college football coach in history. And <clears throat> win is an acronym for what's important now. Mm. So if you take a look at something hard, let's say that you want to gain control over your health. You know what I mean? Like I used to weigh 63 pounds more than I do today. I don't look like this dude. However, I'm pretty happy and grateful for my state of health. Like I have energy, <laughs> I have vitality, and couldn't be happier. Uh, yet there's always room for improvement. Yes? Yeah. So it's just taking a look at, okay, what's one step I can take? Because if you don't feel worthy, if you don't feel confident, it's because you're not taking action. You know what I mean? Like you gain confidence as an end result of the action that you've taken. 
And so I think the problem is most people don't want to get into action because they're afraid to fail. They don't feel confident. They don't feel worthy. But it's like you get those things as the end result of taking the action. Yeah. And so what's just one important step right now you can take? Because the beautiful thing is when you have a clear intention about what the end result looks like and what you want it to be about, let's say it's your health. Let's say it's your finances. Let's say it's your investment portfolio. Let's say it's the relationship you have with your employees or your, the people you collaborate with. If you, if you set that clear intention and you just take a step, when the intention's clear, the mechanism will appear. It always tends to unfold. But it doesn't all unfold like a 100-step action plan. It's just one step. You take that step, and when you maintain that clear intention, the next step unfolds, no matter how seemingly insignificant the step is. And the thing about it is once you keep taking those steps and you stay in motion, motion creates emotion, and yeah. you start building momentum. You know what yep. I mean? So what like short-term targets can you set, hit, and exceed to build some momentum? And with that comes <clears throat> confidence. With right. that comes worth. Now, very important, though, about what I just said is your worth is never attached to the end result. Like your worthiness is not on trial here. You're already enough. And that should be the key to get you to take at least an action step. You're already worthy of it. So don't attach your worthiness to if I get the end result, the, the objective or I achieve, then I'm enough. No, no, no. You already are. And I think that's the biggest thing for people is they're always going for things because when <coughs> I get it, then I'll be. Yeah. Fill in the blank. And it's yeah. just so backwards. <clears throat> it is. It's interesting how how being uh, or being in that space, becoming that space, right? It, it comes back to the I am. Um, mm -hmm. The uh, the whole idea of, of coming from within um, and being that person from within just manifests manifests on the outside. Um, afterwards, it, it's. I mean, I still don't. I don't know how to explain it. You're a lot better at explaining this kind of stuff than I am. I just know it works, right? Yeah. Well, uh, you don't need to know how electricity works to flip a switch. Flip a switch. You know what I mean? Exactly. So I know how to the, flip a switch. Yeah. The fact that you <laughs> use it is is plenty because you see yeah. results from it. To be able to articulate is another thing. However, that's not required in order to actually execute on the things we're talking about. Yeah. Um, I, I think, I mean, well, going back to, to the degree of confidence, I mean, like you said, it's Action gives you confidence. Action and results. Understanding the wins, right? Yeah. What? How are we winning? Every single day, uh, jot down your wins. Journal, people. Journal. Take the, yeah. you know, take the time to write things down on a book, on a piece of paper. It's not going to be the same thing than you know the the word no. file. It's handy. Notes on your phone. They're cute. Um, but journal, it's journal. Yeah. It's really cool to go back to your notebooks and stuff that you wrote um, five, ten years ago that you felt was you know impossible absolutely and you crushed it you know in the well and it's amazing three years too. Later. there's something to be said about taking that intangible <clears throat> those thoughts you, you, you're making it a, a material thing you're putting yes, it out in the real you world. are yeah. and and there, there's something there's about energy behind that it. process when you start writing it down what comes out you're like oh my god Clarity i didn't even know out. that yeah and the, the thing that i want everyone to really take away from this though is the win is not what you get as the end result yeah the win is that you took action yeah the win is that you did the thing that you thought was hard and at the end of that regardless <clears> of the outcome you're like Check me out. I did it. it I, 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 I didn't hold myself back again. Yeah. I wasn't predictable to myself. I changed my personality to create a new personal reality. I yeah. took action. That is the win, not the end result. I love going back to, to, the, um, to a space of uh, recognition. Um, and like, for example, one of the things that I, that I often talk about with, uh, with my team is uh, we'll have headaches, right? We're going through, sure. you know, deals. We're doing it. The real estate is messy, bro. Like, Things happen. Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, we may, you know, try to walk on water uh, when we connect <laughs> and, and, you know, energy wise and, and, you know, stay positive and all that stuff. Uh, but the reality thing is that deals are messy, right? Real estate is messy. The world is messy. We got to have that, um, that self-centeredness uh, to, to, and I mean that in a good, in a good yeah. note, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, to, uh, to really just cope with everything that's coming at us. Well, you so, mean, sorry, go ahead. So one thing that I do on a regular basis is go back to, okay, what's, what, what was the old me like? Mm. Um, old me being last week, old me sure. being shit yesterday sometimes, yeah. old me being 10 years ago, you know, what was that person like? One thing that I, that I always ask, like, for example, when I have, you know, that, employees and people come you know come to me and you know have an issue or something like that i i i have them you know just breathe for a minute slow mm -hmm. down a little bit and then bro you do realize 
that the problems that you're having right now seem so far fetched six months ago. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it, 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 it was, I mean, completely something that was, yeah. that wasn't even on the radar, meaning that uh, as far as advances and growth and accomplishment, right? Yeah. Six months ago, this was just a dream. Exactly. To have these problems. <clears throat> exactly. Yeah. So, even though sometimes it may not feel like it, when you're in that track, you're making progress, totally. right? When you write it down, you're making it tangible. Yeah. Um, and you have you have your own you know track record, your own you know a way of, of uh, your own proof per se. Absolutely. You know what I mean? But and the thing about it is, you said the self centeredness, <clears throat> not selfish. Yeah. Self centered meaning centered because the fact of the matter is, reality is always unfolding. It's been unfolding for billions of years, and when you're gone, when I'm gone, reality's still gonna be unfolding. So the thing about it is, with those belief systems, we're seeing reality unfold not as it is, but as we are. It's through yeah. our lens of perception, through those belief systems. That Those belief systems are picking up bits of data and turning them into something that fits our belief systems. Right. So, you know, you got a question. What's really happening here? What's really the challenge? What's really <clears throat> hard? You know, and everybody wants easy. Yeah. But at the end of the day, what beautiful, brilliant, big, better, more results come from easy? And I'm not saying everything should be a struggle and hustle and grind, yet when you confront the thing that exists within you, because that's the thing about reality unfolding. When you're like, I have a problem with that. I have a problem with what you just said. I have a problem with what they just did. No, you have a problem in here that's getting triggered or activated through that situation. And so the hard thing is speak your truth in that moment, take action, ask for what you want. Yes? Yeah. I mean, that's important, <clears throat> especially if you're an entrepreneur, you got to ask for what you want. 100%. And so if that's the hard part and then you take the action – that's the win because who you become in that process. And so facing those hard things that only exist within you and confronting it, like you're slaying the dragon, so to speak. Yeah. You know what I mean? And now you feel more confident. You feel more powerful because you're not giving your power away to circumstances, conditions, and events. 100%. You're taking it back. And now you get to take that state of being and that personality to the next situation, the next situation, the next situation. And life just starts to unfold and it can become easier because you're easier in here to deal with yourself. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> it uh, it makes you stronger, right? Totally. Um, don't don't. I guess I've heard it. I heard it a long time ago, and I can't remember where. But don't pray for things to be easier. Pray for you to be better. <laughs> uh, exactly. And and, yeah. and real growth doesn't come from the easy part, right? No. The easy part is the comfort zone. The easy part is the you know the, the stuff that uh, that you know that's transactional. It's almost shallow. It's superficial. Yeah. The real part, the hard you know the hard stuff is it's going in and be real, being real with oneself. Uh, what do I want as an individual? That's ask yourself that question and cut the bullshit. Yeah. Um, and honor yourself while you're doing that. That's that's gonna be a challenge, right? Absolutely. It's not gonna be the easy thing. The easy thing is saying what people want to, you know, hear. The easy thing is it's complying and just because. I mean, that sounded, you know, uh, <laughs> um, uh, political, but it's not. Uh, it's uh, it's you know, complying to society as a whole and and not following your own direction, your own dream, your own path because you have no idea what it is. You know, that's that's easier than really carving your own way because you you feel um, a a degree of responsibility to your truth, right? Absolutely. So yeah, your authentic self. <clears throat> exactly. I say if you're doing the easy things. Really, to me, my, my opinion in the matter is that would mean it's because you have a memory of it. And if you have a memory of it, it's because you've experienced that in your past. And if you're always operating from memories of the past, that means then by definition you're going to be predictable in your future. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like <coughs> the people you know the best, to a degree, they're very predictable about certain things because they're not changing. They're not becoming a new personality. They're not becoming stronger. They're not confronting themselves with situations and transcending that. Yeah. You know what I mean? So and the beautiful thing about it is it's, it's, a, it's a metamorphosis. It's a transformation. The caterpillar turns into a butterfly. And the beautiful thing is the butterfly never goes back to being a caterpillar. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Like, yeah. It's, it breaks the mold. Like, you, you can't, once you're, once you're out of that, uh, once you, you have, any, I, I haven't seen anybody who's experienced growth, real growth, um, and you go back to, to the old you know, self. No. 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 N not not when you have that real, you know, growth come in and yeah. that, uh, you know, that the game changer, the, the, just the, the shit that rewires your, your psyche. Totally. Like, that's, that's a new that's, personality. That's a completely different thing than going to a weekend seminar. A Absolutely. And, and dropping nice, you know, memes and, and quotes on, on social, right? Yeah, because you memorize a bunch of cool yeah, information. Yeah, exactly. When you, when you, um, when you come in and you actually take it to heart, 
um, and you start adopting these principles. Yes. And create change. And you, I mean, you walk with that. That's, you know, that's yeah. once, once you're in that track, it's, I mean, I, I haven't seen anybody go back. No. I but, just but that's the key right there. Because the mold is, breaks. Is like doing the hard things. Is yeah. you know what's in your best interest. Yes? <clears throat> yeah. You know the philosophy. Doing the hard things is all about getting into action with it, as you just said, to integrate it, to implement it, to demonstrate that you actually understand. It's not enough to just know. You've got to do it. Yeah. And that's what's hard. It's confronting what exists within you in your <clears throat> BS, your belief systems. Yeah. And yeah. your emotional records of the past that stored stuck energy you hang on to about things that happened to you that left an impact that you're hanging on to. Damn. So you go to a seminar, you read a book, you watch the podcast, you learn new information, you've got the philosophy. But it's not enough to know. We yeah. must do with it, implement, integrate, take action. Yeah, and uh, once you do that, when you do it enough times, it becomes a habit. Totally. You become... N not numb, right? But you can you become better at doing the hard stuff. Well, it's simple. That which is impressed must be expressed. Mm. It's as simple as that. Yeah. And so, what are you <clears throat> continually impressing? They say, according to studies, we think sixty to seventy thousand thoughts a day, ninety percent of which are the exact same ones we thought yesterday. Hence, you're predictable. But it's a habit. Yeah. So, learning new things taking new actions that normally you would stop yourself and having a new experience of yourself, you keep doing that, you're impressing it upon your unconscious mind until it's a subconscious program. It's, a, it's just who you are. It's a new personality that'll create a new personal reality. Yeah. Um, I wanna, uh, this, is, this is something that I do when I, whenever I'm getting, I don't wanna say getting ready to you know, do a hard thing, right? Because I don't really, I just see them as things. I see them as actions. I see them as stuff that has to be you know, handled. Um, uh, you know, a lot of times when I've found myself procrastinating in the past is because of a, a lack of clarity. So this is a little process, a little breakdown that I that I do um, to just get better at it. Um, and uh, the first thing I do is I'll do a mind dump. I call it a mind dump. Okay. I'm not as eloquent with words. Um, <laughs> like, for example, BS, uh, which is what? Belief systems. Belief systems. I, uh, to me, it's bullshit. I mean, like, yeah, of that, course. That's, that's what that's it means. Yeah, come on, man. Yeah, come on. <laughs> All right, so up, anyways. <laughs> um... So I, I have uh, my belief system <laughs> walks me through the process of doing this. But this helps me quite a bit. I mean, and, and uh, I do this, like, for example, uh, the last big session that I had, in, I mean, when I say session, it's me sitting down with a notebook or a whiteboard mm -hmm. uh, and then just doing a mind dump, literally a mind dump, just putting everything somewhere when I, where I get it out of my head and into a wall. I mean, that to me is, is like one of the best activities or use of my time, right? Um, and uh, last time I did it was uh, uh, actually at the beginning of the year when I was trying to plan out, you know, the, the, rest, of this, the rest of the year. I just, you know, broke it down by quarters and whatnot. Mm -hmm. uh, to me, the stuff that I'm doing is, is, is hard stuff, right? Because it's not, I'm not repeating the same actions that I did last year. I'm not um, uh, playing in the same space that I was playing last year. I'm, I'm leveling up. So this whole year, is, it's a new year, right? Yeah. This is the way that I'm, I'm, I'm coping with it. And that's uh, the first thing I do is a mind dump. Simple. You sit down again with a piece of paper or a whiteboard if you have it, and then you drop. You know, just drop all the ideas on there. Drop all the and all you're doing. You're not selecting. You're not making it pretty. You're not you know trying to map things out and to make that it makes sense in a way that it makes sense. Um, you're just doing a mind dump. Yeah. It's really what it is. So throwing yeah. it all on the board. Yeah. Throwing yeah. it Vomit all on the board. board. Spaghetti on the wall. It's really what it is. Um, from there, I mean, I stand back. And I look at this whole thing. Have you seen those uh, those like the murder shows where they have like oh, all I've the lines? Walls. Yeah. And <laughs> my my wall is not a murder fine. show. It <laughs> no. looks like it looks like one, but it's not. <laughs> um, no, but it's it's so you step back and then you have you know you start to create this picture and that like what you see on the wall at that point in time or that notebook that's your brain. It that's is. all the shit that's going through your head, right? Yeah. Um, now, it's out there. What can you do? You can clarify it. The next thing is triage. There's something that I brought back from the fire department. We used to triage um, you know, patients when we were responding in EMS and all that, so bringing them into a hospital. So I think back of the, the term triage, and that to me is what's most important. It's kind of like when, right? Yeah. What is prioritize. Uh, yeah, exactly. Prioritize what's important now. And um, um, I'll start prioritizing. Out of that mind dump, I'll start taking stuff out. Okay, this is important. This is important. This is important. I can push this out. This is not too critical. Even the crazy thing is that what this helps me do is understand that um, a lot of the little things are taking up space mm. in my mind. 
Yeah, your mental right? bandwidth. Exactly. Yep. They're like, oh my God, that's it's it's a it's a stupid email. I have to write a stupid email. It's there, but yet it's still taking that you know that little bit of uh, peace of mind. It's being taken by that little thought. Yeah. Right. So, um, I do that. I triage and um, clarity. What I'm looking for here when I'm triaging, I'm looking for clarity. Okay, where am I headed with this thing? Does it make sense? Is everything that I have in my head right now uh, really a, a subject of, of concern or subject of, of immediate action? Or what is, what is not, right? Um, I ask myself if it aligns. Beautiful. Does it align with the stuff that I want to do? Does it align with me empowering entrepreneurship or empowering yeah. Is it aligned you know, with your people? mission? Exactly. Your purpose. Yeah. Your mission, your purpose. And, um, and if it doesn't, I shouldn't be doing it. I need to f- delegate it. I need to do something else with it. If it's something yeah. that's got to get done. What was so brilliant is you got it out of here. Exactly. Taking off your mental bandwidth. Because I-, I love so much that you're talking about this too. Because I believe in your mental bandwidth, like that's your attention. That's your focus. That's your energy. And so yeah. what you're doing is you're like defrag here. Like let's clean this up and get everything out of here that's not Such important. Such a Windows guy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me for those people who were born in 1872. Defrag you know, means you know, that you cleaned your Windows computer. You don't do that with Macs? No. Sorry. I know. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for the clarification. Yeah. But anyways, before I was really interrupted, <laughs> you gotta you gotta clean up that space so that and 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 so powerful because I, I think I showed this a couple episodes ago. When I got a bunch of stuff off my plate. That means that all my mental bandwidth was focused on my role, what's most important, that's the priority. Because of that, my business doubled, tripled, quadrupled. By just doing that, just getting things off the mental bandwidth. So, yeah, man, that because we always make time for priorities, yes? So what you're saying is brain dump, triage, prioritize, hierarchy of values, and then you got all the mental bandwidth that are aligned. That's how you would determine the priority. And then you just go to go to town. Yeah, the last one is take massive imperfect action. I mean, mm-hmm. I, I love the term massive imperf- imperfect action. It doesn't have to be perfect. You just take an action. You're it's walking forward. As you're walking forward, um, it, clarity just becomes you know even better, right? Yeah. And and uh, and the uh, the results that you're gonna have with those actions are gonna open up new pathways, new opportunities, new ways of doing things, and, and make you know the the road easier as you're taking things. But if you want to sit there and then uh, theorize about how the whole thing is gonna look before you take the first step, uh, on step three you're gonna have to rework your plan. Fucking totally. guarantee you. Yeah. Um. So so yeah, I mean that's that's kind of like it's my process for 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 clarity and really breaking stuff down when I'm struggling with something hard, something difficult. Um. If I'm gonna long a new you know n- new training or whatnot right putting together for example a a, a solid training course mm. is it's a lot of work same as yeah. an event right yeah you, you didn't know how to put together an event no. i didn't know how to put together a, a a training course or program um it's a big thing to chew on why because people are going to come in they're going to pay they better learn i mean it, it's yeah. what do i do i mean i do a mind dump Again, I walk through the whole process. I mean, triage what's important, what's not. What am I going to yep. keep in here? Is this, you know, pull clarity from that? Is it does it align with the stuff that we're doing? And then take massive action, start putting it together. Boom, yeah. boom, 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 boom. Well, what I love what you said is <coughs> massive imperfect action. Massive imperfect. Because most action. people get into that analysis paralysis of okay, I got to have a perfect plan of a hundred steps here. And it's like you don't know what's <coughs> perfect because you've never had an experience of this. No. You don't. You don't know what you don't know. How could you possibly take into consideration all, all these things? Yeah. So, so doing the hard things sometimes is just taking the first step. Yeah. And the thing I, that I found is because part of my BS is I'm not smart enough. That's one of my programs from being a young kid. Total BS. Get, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I mean, scholastically speaking, so for me to even down that's and, scholastically clever, it, right? Like, it's a big word. It is. I don't think I can repeat that again. <laughs> like it's it's a difficult word. word of the day, you agree? Scholastically, yeah. Is that even a word? Yeah. Mm. So my point being though is that I <clears> am <throat> willing to get into action because I know I don't know all things, especially when I'm doing something new. I cannot possibly account for all the potential pitfalls and things to look out for because I don't have the experience. Yeah. However. As I get into action, I'm going to learn new information through mistakes. I love mistakes. They're just those beautiful little gifts of knowledge. Yeah. And getting new information by just being in action gets you in formation. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's how you get the confidence. That's how you get the experience. That's how you're able to then duplicate to somebody else. Hey, here's the path. Here's what I learned. Look out for this. Look out for that. Da, da, da. And you can paint the picture and, and give them a clear path to success in your trainings and so forth. Right? So... I think that's what it all comes down to. <clears throat> do the hard things, but just get your ass into action. 
and massive notice massive imperfect action. Massive imperfect action. Just notice the stories, notice the emotions that come up, but just realize I'm not my mind, I'm not my emotions, they're things I have, and I can witness them. Yeah. And how often does my mind and my emotions hold me back? And maybe I'm tired of the results that I'm getting by holding myself back. Yeah. So do the hard thing, which is to notice those things and move forward anyways. Yep, 100%, man. Um, we are in a we are in context. We are in a space of context. Everything around us is a story. Everything around us, it's an engram. It's a new thing that's going to influence, um, if we're not aware of it, the way that we do things, right? Absolutely. We can always come back to self. We can always come back to our truth and figure out what the uh, the best approach is uh, from a from from within, right? If it if it aligns, if it aligns to yourself, if it aligns to to your purpose, to your truth, to what you want to do. Um, and you're authentic. I mean, you're gonna be you're gonna be okay. Uh, now the thing is to get over that fear and actually handle the difficult things because a lot of the the beautiful things of life really happened or, or happen on that other side. Yeah, right? yeah, absolutely. <clears throat> and the only thing stopping you that's hard is just your bullshit story on on why you think it's gonna be X, Y, and Z. Yeah. And how many times you get in action, you realize I was full of shit. Yeah. People think what's important now? Do a mind dump and go through the process. So. I love that, man. Yeah, good stuff. Really good little session. Fuck yeah. All right, so, uh, Justin, where can people find you if they want to get a hold of you? (coughs) JustinThorstad.com. Thorstad is T-H-O-R-S-T-A-D. Of course, my cell phone is the best way, 602-348-8534. Savage. Sweet. All right, and you can find me at Rafael Cortez, CEO on iTunes, or actually CEO Plus Podcast on iTunes, Rafael Cortez, CEO on YouTube. Uh, Subscribe, like, and share. Make sure that you spread the word if you like what we're doing here every Monday for you. Um, And we'll catch you on the next one. Actually, we're going to have the next one uh, in about five minutes Yeah, as we're recording. So if you're on IG, you're going to catch that one too. I don't care what you think. Do Um, the hard things. Do the hard things. Yes, exactly. Stay focused. You got this. Boom!